In this video, we'll be looking at a typical Romanesque pilgrimage church. Romanesque art and architecture belong to the Middle Ages or medieval period. The medieval period runs from the 4th to the 15th century in Northern and Western Europe. The dates for Romanesque are about 1050 to 1150. The term Romanesque was first used in the 19th century. Romanesque church architecture is influenced by two things, the growth of monasteries and the popularity of pilgrimages. Pilgrimage churches were situated along major pilgrimage routes that led to holy sites such as Canterbury, Rome and Jerusalem. Another popular route wound its way through France and ended at the Cathedral of Santiago de Compostela in northwest Spain. Our typical plan is based on churches on this route. It incorporates features found in many, but not all, Romanesque pilgrimage churches. A typical pilgrimage church can be an abbey church or a cathedral. An abbey church is the main building in a monastic community. It is used by the monks or nuns who live there. A cathedral is a church used by a bishop and the inhabitants of a city or town. Our typical Romanesque pilgrimage church can be described as a big and long basilica plan with modifications. The basilica plan first appears in Christian church architecture between the 4th and 6th centuries in Rome and other early Christian centres. A typical early Christian basilica plan is rectangular. It has a central nave flanked by one or two aisles. Nave and aisles are separated by columns, indicated in this plan by dots. The nave is higher than the aisles. The aisles can sometimes be two stories high. The upper story is called a gallery. A semicircular apse projects from one of the shorter sides. A small area between the nave and apse is reserved for the altar. This area is called a choir or chancel. It can be separated from the nave by a screen. The apse is almost always at the east, the entrance at the west. These characteristics are also found in a typical Romanesque pilgrimage church. But a typical Romanesque pilgrimage church has several modifications. At the eastern end, in front of the choir, there is a transept, a space that continues beyond the north and south walls. It gives the church plan the shape of a Latin cross. The transept crossing, the space where the transept meets the nave and choir, is shown here as four black octagons arranged in a square. A high tower is usually built over the transept crossing. Chapels can be added to the transept arms, especially on the eastern side. Chapels also appear at the eastern apse end. Access to these chapels is through an ambulatory. The ambulatory is an interior passageway for walking through. It is connected to the outer aisles. So continuous, uninterrupted movement is possible. For instance, from the entrance, along the northern outer aisle, through the ambulatory in the northern transept arm, then the ambulatory behind the apse, and either out through the southern transept arm or back to the entrance by way of the southern outer aisle. The chapels behind the apse and in the transept often housed famous relics, and it's the relics that pilgrims want to see. So pilgrims are able to enter the church, view the relics, and leave without interrupting the clergy and parishioners in the rest of the church. A typical early Christian basilica has a wooden ceiling, but a wooden ceiling can burn easily. So the typical Romanesque pilgrimage church has a stone vault that is more fireproof. The vault covering the nave is a barrel vault. The aisles are covered with cross vaults. Both barrel and cross vaults were used by earlier Roman builders between the first and fourth centuries. Roman vaults were made of concrete but Romanesque vaults were constructed of stone or brick. Stone vaults require strong supports, 
like thick walls and sturdy arches on piers. A pier, like a column, is the support that an arch springs from. But it is stronger and thicker than a column. Semicircular arches, called round arches, are the most common type in Romanesque architecture. From the ground up, the interior elevation consists of piers supporting round arches, then the double round arched openings of the gallery, then the vault rising from the gallery. There are no windows under the vault, but there can be windows in the outer walls of the aisles and ambulatories. Attached columns between the arches run from the floor to the barrel vault at regular intervals. Their capitals connect to the transverse ribs. The transverse ribs are the arches following the curve of the barrel vault. By comparison, the elevation of a typical early Christian basilica church consists of round arches supported by columns, a wall above them, and windows under the wooden ceiling. A typical Romanesque pilgrimage church has at least three towers. The pair at the western entrance complement the tower in the transept crossing. They enable the building to be seen from far away. The doors at the entrance contain sculptural decoration carved from stone. In the tympanum, the semicircular space above the door, the relief usually shows biblical scenes in an up-to-date Romanesque style. These are lessons to learn for the people entering the church or walking by. The most common scene is of God enthroned. He's the largest and most centrally placed figure. He is the judge who sends pious souls to heaven and condemns the rest to hell, a place inhabited by very energetic and fearsome devils.